The Zen philosopher Basho once wrote, a flute with no holes is not a flute. And a donut with no hole is a Danish. He's a funny guy. These movies have come back from the past to make you laugh. This is the big one, people. I'm kind of a big deal. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedies of all time. For our series on the top comedies of all time, we've chosen comedy films per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, watchability, and, of course, how funny they are. Well, you're really doing it, aren't you? You're just shitting in the street. For this clip, the final installment in the series, we've taken the top four movies from each of our previous lists and pitted them against each other to come up with our final list. <laughs> Number 10, Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room. Stanley Kubrick was the master of genre-bending films, and this Cold War, pre-apocalyptic political black comedy is widely regarded as one of his greatest efforts. Mr. President, it is not only possible, it is essential. While the movie isn't outright hilarious, Who are you? the intense performances by all the supporting actors, in contrast to Peter Sellers' own master of disguise style of comedy, Monsieur! are genuinely funny and cement Dr. Strangelove as a cinematic piece of art. <laughs> Number nine, Super Bad. McLovin! Nice! Jonah Hill got his first lead role in this coming of age comedy about two high schoolers who are just trying to graduate in style. Just fing come with me on this voyage and just stop being a pussy for once and we can fing fuck some girls already. The result is a series of awkwardly hilarious and sometimes vulgar adventures as Seth, played by Hill, and Evan, played by Michael Sarah, try to score some alcohol and get with the cool kids. F me, right? Interestingly, the film was written by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and is based on their own experiences in high school. These eyes, oh, crying. Yeah. These eyes have seen a lot of love, but they're never gonna see another one. Superbad was a box office hit and was well received by critics along with being one of the most successful high school comedies ever. I am McLovin. Uh. No, you're not. No one's McLovin. McLovin's never existed because that's a made up dumb and fairy tale name, you I get. Number eight, Animal House. <laughs> Widely regarded as the epitome of teen sex comedies, National Lampoon's Animal House undoubtedly set a precedent for the gross-out movies that followed and imitated it. I'm a zit. Get it? With characters like the crusty old Dean Wormer. Not another word. And the fun-loving frat boy Otter. What's the matter with everyone around here? Later teen comedies took their cues from this John Landis flick. <laughs> While the laughs come from both lowbrow and more sophisticated comedy, the highlight has got to be John Belushi's performance as the simple yet dedicated Bluto. Ah, thanks. I needed that. Can I show you something? If you're feeling sad and lonely. Number seven. Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. Who is this Austin Powers? The ultimate gentleman spy. Irresistible to women, deadly to his enemies, a legend in his own time. Straight from the mind of SNL alum Mike Myers, this spy movie spoof hit theaters in a big way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby! Yeah. Spawning several sequels and Halloween costume ideas for years to come. Very shagadelic. Austin Powers pokes fun at all the classic Bond movie tropes. It's a very groovy time. <laughs> while pulling off an engaging story with memorably insane characters. One million dollars. Even today, the jokes are still side-splittingly funny, and Myers' performances have us howling with laughter. Do I make you horny? Randy, do I make you horny, baby? Yes! Number six, Blazing Saddles. Oh, dearie, dear. Ah, well, OK. 
Okay. This Mel Brooks classic was one of the first in a long line of spoof comedies that kicked off the legendary director's career. Work, 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 work. Hello, boys. Have a good night's rest. I missed you. A lampoon of old cowboy westerns, Blazing Saddles takes all the tropes and cliches and lovingly pokes fun at them while delivering a satisfying comedy chock full of visual gags, wordy puns, and hilarious dialogue. Throw out your hands, stick out your tush, hands on your hips, give them a push, you'll be surprised you're doing the French mistake, voila! Bart jokes find their place alongside biting political satire. <laughs> And that combination makes for a constantly rewatchable classic. How about some more beans, Mr. Tiger? I'd say you've had enough. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Number five, Dumb and Dumber. Um, what is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. That sounds good. I'll have that. Jim Carrey was a hot property in the 90s, but no matter how many movies he starred in, he still managed to keep things fresh. Hey, I guess they're right. In Dumb and Dumber, he stars as Lloyd Christmas opposite Jeff Daniels' Harry Dunn, as two best friends without a brain cell between them. You're it. You're it. You're it. Quitsies. Any quitsies. You're it. Quitsies. No, any quitsies. No startsies. You can't do that. In an attempt to return some lost property and get the girl, the pair sets out on a road trip and makes friends on their adventure. Rock, sing, egg, sing, bird, sing. While the flick is inarguably dumb, everything from its dream sequences to the toilet scene will still make you bust a gut, as there are simply no boundaries left uncrossed. <laughs> thanks to the Farrelly brothers' comedic writing, and they're the same force behind the equally brilliant but dumb bowling comedy, Kingpin. Which opponent poses the biggest threat to you in the tournament? <laughs> if I get drunk and fall down hurt myself, I might lose. Number four, Caddyshack. Yeah, what do you think? It's really, uh, it's really awful. With comedy legends like Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Rodney Dangerfield, and many others, this film packs one hell of a punch to the funny bone. Oh, Mrs. Crane, you're a little monkey woman, you know that? You're a little monkey woman. You're lean and you're mean and you're not too far between either, I bet, are you? From start to finish, Caddyshack supplies classic quotes. Look at that one. When the last time I saw a mouth like that, I had a hook in it. Side-splitting performances. This is across uh, a bluegrass, Kentucky bluegrass uh, feather bed bench and uh, Northern California Sensimia. And overall hilarity. What do you say we bust up this joint, huh? Yeah. <laughs> anything can happen in this no-holds-barred laugh riot, and almost anything does. <laughs> when it comes to sports comedies, this flick is truly a hole-in-one. Oh, he got all of that one. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on his feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. Uh... Hey, everyone. Come and see how good I look. Number three, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Mm, I love scotch. I love scotch. Scotch has got scotch. What do you get when you throw four incredibly inept newsmen from the 70s together? Will Ferrell and his cohorts deliver one of the first and funniest flicks in a long line of hilarious comedies starring the same ensemble of actors with Anchorman. 60% of the time, it works every time. The comedy has spawned many quotable one-liners. I love lamp. And even produced a highly anticipated and side-splitting sequel. I'm an Anchorman. I read the news off the teleprompter. It's what I do. How will I live? Thanks to an excellent cast, especially Farrell's almost perfect performance as Ron Burgundy. Oh, I'm in a glass case of emotion! It's immature but still funny humor and tons of gags. The comedy scenes are just as rewatchable and fresh as they were when they first hit theaters. You are a smelly pirate hooker. You look like a blueberry. Why don't you go back to your home on Whore Island? Every passenger on this plane will have fish for dinner will become violently ill in the next half hour. Number two, airplane. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your flight. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? If this movie proves anything, it's the comedies don't have to make sense to be hilarious. All right, I'm going to unlock the automatic pilot. 
On the surface, Airplane is a spoof of earlier disaster films. But as soon as the opening credits roll, the audience is also taken on a non-stop roller coaster ride of sight gags and hilarious dialogue. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Lloyd Bridges is especially funny in his role as Steve McCroskey, an air traffic worker who slowly works his way through all the drugs he can find. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. But thanks to its cheesiness, <laughs> silliness, and it flows through you, and it flows through me, and use of slapstick. Read about Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> How about Buddhism? <laughs> The satirical comedy is often considered one of the decade's finest films. That hunky muffy mess my old lady got to be running cold upside down his head, you know? <laughs> hey, you home, I can dig it. No, he ain't gonna lay no more big rap up on you, man. Before we unveil our pick for top comedy of all time, here are a few honorable mentions. All right, what's the last thing we remember doing last night? Well, the first thing was we were on the roof and we were having those shots of Jaeger. <laughs> Number one, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Hello! Monty Python loves to lampoon history, and they did it again with Life of Brian. However, it's the Holy Grail that's our pick for their greatest comedy achievement. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. Starting from the memorable opening shot, the movie does offer some of the Python gang's trademark stream of consciousness comedy, but under a more unified theme. And it's replete with simple sight gags and intellectual humor. The film has deservedly become a classic, and the lines have been endlessly re-quoted by comedy aficionados everywhere. I fart in your general direction! King Arthur and his knights are mercilessly ridiculed, with the Middle Ages becoming a backdrop for the best comedy of all time. Look, that rabbit's got a vicious streak a mile wide! It's a killer! Do you agree with our list? No! What's your favorite comedy movie of all time? For more hilarious top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.